folks welcome to another short video on a solution I came up with to tramming the mill head after I mounted the vertical mill on the the vertical head on the horizontal mill I was trying to tram it using the table but with the slots and you know, 70 years worth of dings and nicks in the table that wasn't working out very well so the next idea I came up with was to take a 12 inch parallel and work on the front to back alignment and uh, try and use the parallel to help that out and then after working on the front to back I switched it and worked on the side to side that, that didn't it wasn't that easy, didn't produce that good result, so the next thing I tried was a piece of aluminum plate. So, you know, who knows how accurate that was, it's just a piece of, like an offcut of an aluminum plate. So finally I decided there had to be a better way. Digging through the piles of scrap, I found an old rotor off of uh, my F-350. Maybe there's a chance I can make this work. So I parted off the hub and uh, then worked on getting the uh, rotor turned down. The reason I was re the reason I had a spare rotor was because I warped that one and uh, replaced it. So I mounted that up on the lathe and started working on chewing off some of that uh, cast iron. The goal was to get the uh, two faces parallel to each other and uh, as flat as I could get them with the, the lathe I've got. Dealing with the uh, cast iron dust was a bit of a pain as you can see. I put down a rag and used the shop vac and was able to keep it somewhat under control. Did get all over my hands though. But uh, after Turning down the one side, I flipped it over and tried to get it to sit as tight as I could on the uh, on the side that I turned. Throwing a dial indicator up on there and turning it, it was within you know, a few tenths of a thousand on that back face. Then I went ahead and turned down the other side. And again, trying to use the shot to control the dust. You can see I was running at a really slow speed angle, running 65 RPM, otherwise, the you know, cast iron dust sprayed everywhere. So here I've got the rotor turned down and on my surface plate, just checking to see you know, how flat and parallel it is, it looks to be within a few tenths of a thousand. So now with the, uh, what's left of that rotor set up on the mill, we've got a nice surface to sweep. Uh, heavy duty cast iron, it's got a nice uh, webbing between the two layers. It uh, you know, did a pretty good job of stopping them loaded one ton pickup for a lot of years so hopefully it'll uh, be able to handle that dial indicator. So after doing the side to side tramming and getting that as close as I could get it or as close as I was willing to spend the time to get it, went ahead and tightened down the head kind of carefully because it did seem like it would move it a little bit if I wasn't careful. Once I had it snugged up, I was able to go ahead and crank down the bolts and get the side to side set. And here's the side to side. You can see it's pretty close to 
dead on. I have to do it side to side, then I worked on the forward and aft, which is a little bit trickier with the mill head. If you've watched any of Keith Rucker's videos lately, when he fixed his worm gear to, to adjust his head, that's one feature I don't have yet, but I picked up a new head that came with that gear. So, so here I'm just kind of showing where I ended up on the, on the uh, tramming of the head. within a thousandth all the way around so felt like I could live with that pretty easy but anyway just thought I'd throw up a short video show you a little solution I came up with to help me tram out the mill uh, just an old just an old brake rotor nice piece of cast iron but, uh, one nice rotor I'll take to the scrap yard. But I just keep it in a drawer now and use it to trim out the trim out the head. Thanks for watching and hope you found it a little bit useful.